All right, so this is just going to be a quick update. I want to go over what has happened since my last video on Monday. So in my last video, I marked out these zones that I was watching. Um, I did modify this one because uh, while well, the levels that I was watching changed, I had to adjust the fib. But uh, these two stayed the same, and we have gotten to move into this zone of resistance. Uh, so we rejected so far off of the point of control of this range. We also had a 0.5 fib in this uh, you know area as well. And we also SFP'd this high. We grabbed liquidity from this high. And so far, we have just wicked it on the four-hour time frame. And we did get a bit of a move down from there. Uh, there were some valid trades there, but I didn't take a trade. Uh, because, number one, you know, the trade that I would have liked to take, which was the SFP of this high with 15-minute divergences, money flow, and momentum, uh, I probably would have just traded that as the SFP once we reclaimed it. You know, it still would have been kind of a difficult trade to enter because you would have had to be paying attention and, you know, really the best option would have been, you know, entering as soon as it reclaimed that level rather than waiting for the candle to actually close uh, just in terms of risk reward. But, you know, even if you did wait for the candle to close, still a 3R down to this zone where we actually bottomed out. So this was kind of a difficult trade. Um, this happened at 730 in the morning. So this was actually right before I woke up. So I missed this, and you know, even if you were watching this, this was a very fast move up and down. So, you know, there's a good chance that not a lot of people took this trade, even though that was probably the best short trade that was presented in this area. Um, I was watching this zone over here, and I was looking for a short setup, but uh, I just didn't see the confirmations I would have liked. And then, uh, yeah, by the time we kind of started dumping down, we immediately shot down. It was a, a very aggressive move down out of this range, so I was not able to get a short. But I always say it's better to not take a trade than to take a loss by taking an irresponsible trade. And uh, yeah, I didn't see the confirmations I wanted over here, so I didn't enter a trade. So we did get a move down to the uh, first zone of support I was looking at. Uh, when I made my video, it was a little different. I was looking at uh, this fib pull up to what was the high at the time. And uh, yeah, I was kind of focusing on you know just this general area. You know, I was including the top part because a 0.5 fib was there at the time. But uh, yeah, adjusting the fib, you know, you can see we got a move down to the golden pocket. We uh, retested this range over here. And so far, our price is getting a pretty aggressive bounce. So as for the resistance zones I'm watching next, I'm still watching the value area high. I think this is an important resistance. Um, you know, I kind of think that if we get above it, there's a good chance that we make a run for the high. You know, there's a chance that we may, like, just come above the value area high, top out somewhere, and then rotate back down. But uh you know, I think just given how we came down so aggressively, there's a good chance that if we get above the value area high that we may just make a run for the high. So, uh, you know, you can pay attention to the golden pocket, the 786, and, uh, you know, maybe watch for local confirmations if uh, price kind of starts stalling out somewhere. But uh, right now I'm really watching to see what happens at the value area high if uh, we make our way up there. If we're able to put in another high, get above the point of control, that is the zone I'll be watching next. And for support levels, you know, first off, talking locally, and uh, let me hide this value area. It's very annoying that the fixed range always moves down to uh, the, the Bitcoin thing, this. It always, uh, you know, places down below this rather than at the top of the page like everything else. But anyways, uh, I am potentially looking for a retracement locally. I mean, we got a pretty aggressive move here. And I'll look through Market Cipher in a little bit, but if things are looking good on Market Cipher, and if we get a good retracement, if I get a good opportunity long, then maybe I'll look for a long up to uh, some of these highs, maybe then the value area high, and yeah, again, if we get above that, maybe we make a run for, you know, the actual swing high. And so I can delete that box, that is kind of getting in my way, I'll delete that fib, and let's look for some uh, retracement targets. So we got some confluence here with the FIB levels and the value area of this range, the value area high in the 0.5 lineup, the point of control in the golden pocket lineup. So I kind of like this top box right here. Uh, that's kind of my point of interest right now. If we see bullish signs in there, then maybe I'll look for a long first up to uh, some of these local highs, potentially higher. We also have the VWAP and the daily open in that area. So, you know, a bit more confluence around that golden pocket. And below us, we do have some uh, support levels as well, an untapped daily and untapped weekly. And, you know, if you're looking at the structure on a higher time frame, you could maybe say that if uh, we get a move down to there, 
as long as we don't take out this high, then maybe we can put in the higher low around this untapped daily, maybe even the untapped weekly, because the higher low is literally right at the untapped weekly. You know, you can technically SFP that and still maintain structure. So yeah, maybe the higher low isn't in yet. Um, we'll have to see if we come up to touch this high, because if we do, then, you know, I wouldn't be watching those levels as much. And then aside from that, if we can move down below there, then I would probably be looking around the value area low, maybe coming a little bit lower than it. You know, the golden pocket's right below the value area low. I think that is correct. Yeah, it is. So, you know, if we lose these levels, then I'd be looking around the value area low, basically. And, um, yeah, I mean, if we start dumping far down below that, I mean, maybe we're just going lower at that point. So now I'll quickly run through Market Cipher. We'll take a look at uh, how that is looking. So daily time frame basically looks the same. Momentum, you know, came up a little bit more. We got two daily closes. So yeah, momentum's continuing to move up. Money flow looks like it's continuing to move down. We're even getting a local move down here. So, you know, basically looks the same. But uh, yeah, the money flow is still kind of coming out. And the four hour. So we did actually get a slight bearish div on that high with momentum. Not with money flow. Money flow put in a higher high as uh, price did. So it's not as strong of a divergence, but we do have a slight bear div at that high. And now money flow is kind of, you know, cutting to the downside. Could it maybe just be like a little retracement money flow for it to go higher? We see that kind of thing a lot, like over here. So, uh, you know, it's hard to tell right now. We'll have to look at the lower time frames, see if money flow is, uh, you know, getting a move to the upside on them. Maybe that'll give us a better hint as to where this could go. So the three hour looks, you know, pretty different. Uh, we still have the momentum div but not money flow div and money flow has not come down as sharply you know it's still pretty thick and we just printed a trigger wave down here that actually kind of looks good we have like an extremely deep anchor wave very tight trigger wave uh is it going to hold you know it's hard to tell sometimes when you see this uh, you could see momentum come back down and kind of print a deeper trigger wave and then you know it still ends up being a trigger wave it's just you know the first one didn't work but um you know, potentially this could actually be kind of a bullish sign. Uh, very tight trigger waves like that are sometimes a sign of strength if momentum can uh, really get moving back to the upside again. Two hour, we also see that trigger wave. It, you know, actually kind of looks bullish here. Uh, money flow is coming out a little bit. You know, uh, we see the same thing. Momentum div, not money flow div. Uh, yeah, money flow put in a slightly higher high over here. It, you know, actually maybe was a slight money flow div, but, you know, I'm not going to count that because it came higher later. Uh, and overall, you know, money flow just kind of looks thick in the green, even though it could be taking a turn to the downside. Um, yeah, we don't know if that's going to continue to the downside or not. It could just be kind of like another higher low like this. So now one hour. Uh, one hour kind of looks a bit more bearish, I have to say. We see very clear direction to the downside with momentum. It's kind of respecting this trend line. Whereas on the low end of MCB, the momentum waves are actually putting in slightly lower lows. So that just kind of shows that overall direction is down with momentum. And also with money flow, we're seeing money flow kind of come out. You know, it's not a super strong direction to the downside, but it is putting in lower highs. And on the one hour, I believe we would actually have the money flow divs that we were missing on the other time frames. So this is the only time frame really with clear money flow divs where it uh yeah is now continuing to put in lower highs. So that actually kind of looks more bearish. And you know the 30 minute kind of back setup as well. You know again momentum putting in lower highs and you know kind of local lower lows here if you want to count that, you know lower low lower low and money flow is kind of coming out locally as well. Um, it did actually put in a higher high here, though, which is an interesting spot to put in a higher high. It actually did it on that lower high in price. So, you know, if anything, I'd say the 30 minute is kind of backing up the one hour bearishness a little bit with uh, money flow coming out locally as well. But, you know, it's still kind of uncertain. Um, you know, it looks like the four hour to the two hour have bullish potential. And, you know, the one hour is looking kind of bearish, but not like crazy bearish. So, yeah, definitely a little uncertain. Um, so, yeah, I'll just be watching price and seeing how this develops. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, leaving a comment. Really appreciate all you that do that. And I will see you all in the next video.